Hey guys, welcome to another Test Miles video. I am Nick Miles and I am in the beautiful mountains surrounding Palm Springs to drive this, the brand new Audi S4. This vehicle is a culmination of Audi DNA, design and pure technology. And if you take a look at the front of this vehicle, Audi have worked very hard to replicate some of the lines that you'll find in a very clean cut diamond. They've worked very hard on making this car the ultimate Audi and we'll take it on the road and find out if they succeeded in that goal. That's all coming up in this Test Miles review. Inside the brand new Audi S4 and my driving partner is uh, my good friend Roman Micah from the Fast Lane Car. Uh, you have already driven this car, my friend. So tell me how you feel about it. Oh, dude, it, so much fun. Zero to 60, 4.4 seconds, all wheel drive, 350 horsepower, eight gears. What is there not to love except for one thing? Which, which one don't you like about it? You know, the steering's a little numb. I'm not a big fan of electric steering. Can you feel the road surface? Can you feel what that uh, steering rack is doing? No, that would have been one of my comments as well, too. The other thing is, I've tried a couple different drive modes, and the car is really good at doing a lot of things, holding corners. Uh, the car is really good at positioning itself on the road. But I feel a little bit like, put my foot down, takes a few seconds to kick in, right? Yeah, it's interesting because Audi says that they've put that turbo right in the heart of that V so that you have kind of equal amounts of space in between the turbo and the two banks so that you should have, with a dual scroll turbo, almost instantaneous throttle response, but you're saying you're not feeling that. Not, not as much as I expected to. Uh, this car has had quite considerable makeover uh, in this generation of the vehicle or in this uh, latest iteration of the vehicle. Uh, one of the things I think that I do often is I try to find problems with cars when really, I mean, I, I'd be quite happy to own this car. I wouldn't be complaining at all if I was actually one of the cars in my, in my stable, as it were. But those are the things that maybe I was expecting to be different. Uh, the eight-speed transmission seems to work fine. I'm not hearing or feeling gear shifts too often. The sound is phenomenal. We should try and demonstrate that. Uh, I don't know how well you can hear that. We don't have the answer to whether this car is electronic sound or whether it's real sound, right? Yeah, you know, there are several things that I think in this car, to me at least, are lacking. I think the Germans have always pushed technology, and that's kind of been Audi's forte. And it's surprising that there is not a dual clutch transmission because they have one. They've said they've gone to an eight speed because it's better. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't know about that. I always think dual clutches are a little bit faster, they're a little bit more linear. You don't quite have that kind of sudden uh, rush and then the stop and the rush that you would with a regular transmission with a torque converter like this has. And what's also missing is a manual transmission. Right, and so let's talk about why those things may be missing. Manual transmission, Audi tell us there is no business case for it. Uh, everybody says they want one, but when it comes down to it and somebody says, you know, I've got to sit in this car in traffic, they actually back off and they don't, they don't buy it. So everyone asks for them, but when it comes to the money transaction, it doesn't actually happen. The other thing about the dual clutch transmission, it could be a cost point, it could be a fuel economy point, and it could be a technology point. They, they do feel that this car is fine without it. I will tell you, I would be happier with it, but I might not be happy at the price it comes at. Yeah, what do you think of the style? We had a talk by Audi yesterday and they told us that they used the diamond shape to kind of uh, represent what they were going for with the design language. Do you like that? Uh, I do. I do like the square, square and the lines and the sharp angles and the grill and the fact that the headlight position between the S5 and the uh, S4 is different to try and get a different feeling, a different emotion for people. I will tell you that with design, although I consider myself more of an artist than I do an engineer, I don't often see these things until they're pointed out to me. I don't see them intuitively and maybe it's because I am emotional about the car and not technical. Yeah, and that's a good word, emotional. That's what the designer said. He said that if you want, you know, S5 and the uh, S4, the biggest difference is four doors and two doors, right? One's a coupe, one's a four door. Uh, and he said if you want the more emotional one, you should go for the S5 because underneath they're basically the same car. The other thing I guess is the back doesn't really warrant 
adults being transported in the car. It's okay, you know, it's the kind of car that if you're gonna to go to lunch with your colleagues, you'll be fine in the back. If you wanna cross the country, yeah, not so much, if you're especially my height. Right, and it, so it's really good for the under 12s on a, on a long ride basis, yeah. but the over 12s, not so much. Yeah, I think you wanna get the S6 or the S8 if you're gonna go there. I think we should coin a new, uh, a new uh, phrase for small back seats and call them PG. <laughs> <laughs> they're only good for the under 12s. <laughs> <laughs> it is a small, I mean it is, you know, it's not their smallest car, obviously there's a there's a three as well that's smaller, but it is uh, kind of the, the smallest of the of the kind of the mainstream uh, sedan yeah. line. Yeah, and I said the same thing about the three, I mean the, the back seat space, it's the same for any of those cars in that class, uh, the CLAMG and also the M2s. So, this car does have uh, active suspension and it does level the car, but to me, the steering issue is that when you put it into, let's say, dynamic mode, all it does is make the steering heavier. It doesn't give you any more feedback. It just makes it heavier, like you're going faster. Yeah, and I think that's purely because you're going faster and you don't want to make uh, quick adjustments when you're going faster. And maybe more of a safety feature than it is an exhilaration feature. When we come to the Quattro, and they've, they've changed that considerably for this generation, one of the things I noticed in this car, now they're saying 60-40 split, 60% of, of the power going to the rear wheels, 40% to the front wheels, even though it can send torque to whichever wheel needs it at a time, I can feel that in ex acceleration. Yeah, it's uh, exa you're exactly right, Nick. It's very neutral, uh, it's very balanced, it's very level. Uh, all, that, all that is really good. I, I feel like this is a comfortable car for both canyon carving and for everyday commuting. Uh, especially like the power, I think that 4.4 seconds 0 to 60 is uh, actually really fast. Absolutely, and you look at the competitions that are maybe more expensive and more sports car like, and they don't have their uh, 0 to 60 times that much lower. Uh, the best you might get is 0.7 seconds lower, around a 3.7 or so. Um, so you, you know, that's a very reasonable 0 to 60 mile an hour time for the price and the model of the car. Uh, and they're also saying best in class on several things in this. Plus, you get the, this, uh, the navigation system up, the, up front with the Audi virtual cockpit, and you get all those safety features as well in this car, which are better than most of the competition. Yeah, you know, for me, kind of the, the metric of this kind of a car is how does it make me feel when I'm driving down a curvy road like this and for the most part it makes me feel pretty good I, I was driving it right before you and I had a huge smile plastered on my face uh, and that mainly had to do with the engine note and the power that the turbo was cranking out how do you like the uh, the interior design do you like it it's, it's very stark and very German and very kind of Autobahn focused yeah I think they allow the technology to come out and I will tell you that one of the reliefs of getting into this car was noticing that there was two USB ports in the center console which uh, have been lacking shall we say in our Audis of the past. Yeah, um, you know, I said I'd buy it, but if it were my money, I would really want the manual transmission. So I think that's something that, yeah, is dying, but it's so unfortunate, Nick. It really is because this car would be so much more engaging with a manual transmission. So Roman, let's round out this review. Yep. Um, talk about uh, pricing. Uh, so $51,000, I think that's a reasonable price. Um, I know that the S3 is very similarly priced, which is interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's about $3,000, $3,500 more. So it starts at about three and a half K more. So I think it's more like 50. This one starts, they say 51, but then you add dealer destination. So it's really 52, right? right. When it's all said and done. So give it another three K and you're at 55 for the right. S4, right. Uh, um, for the S5, sorry. Right. So, but going down a drop to the S3, that's right, almost right on top of this vehicle. So I'm not sure why people would buy the S3 versus the S4. I would. Yeah. And then the next question is 30 miles a gallon. I think that's extremely good highway mileage for a vehicle that's sports tuned. Uh, what I'm wondering, and the big question is, if Roman Micah has $52,000 plus and is looking at this class of car, would it be this, an IS, or would it be a BMW, or would it be a Mercedes? Yeah, it would probably be this, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it, it 
checks all the boxes for where I live. So uh, it's got all wheel drive, which is what I need in Colorado. It's got a turbo, which is what I need in Colorado. Uh, and it's an Audi, and Audis are extremely popular in Colorado. So um, this has been a well-established car. It has a long uh, pedigree, uh, and uh, I like the looks of it, dude. I think it's actually a very handsome, sexy looking car, and especially in this red, I'm, I'm kind of smitten. Uh, all right, well, you, there you have it. That's our inside look at the uh, brand new uh, Audi S4. Uh, pricing and information, uh, of course, you can get from our website at testmiles.com. You can also watch more videos on our YouTube channel, and uh, if you've had enough of our nattering, then you should subscribe, or subscribe, so you can hear more nattering the next time we want to talk it's about cars. Nattering. Yeah, that's what we do. We natter about cars. Chit chat.